So what I have here is one of those uh, condensed box uh, wine kits. Get some Merlot. I'm going to make this and show you how. So what I have here is the instructions, which I don't really need, and it also says it's a four-week kit. Depends on how much patience you have. You know with wine, the longer you age it, the better it is. If you let it sit long enough, you don't even have to use a clearing agent. Especially if you're uh, allergic to shellfish, because the liquid stuff is based from shellfish. So that's just uh, something you should know. So these, I don't need. Just watch me. Uh, sanitized fermenting pail. I always normally uh, do the wine starting always in plastic and then I go to glass. So I will get to this. The first step always is there's some kind of uh, additive fitting agent. It's a uh, betonite, which is almost like some kind of clay of some sort. Best to get uh, some really hot water, which I'm going to do. Put it in the fermenter. And I'll show you what I do. So what I have here is about five liters. No, wait, three liters of really hot water. So I'm going to put that in and grab a pair of scissors. Put this down. Scissors to cut the package of bentonite so you're not fighting with it. How? So, literally, it's granular, it looks kind of clayish. It really likes to clump up. You sprinkle that in, it really sets to the bottom. So, the good thing about these fermenters with the O-ring. It's normally better. Excuse me, I'll do this on the floor. It's hard. Mix it up. You don't need a spoon. This is easier. If you're using a pail like this, you're not going to have to worry about it. The pressure builds up a bit. You just pop your bum. Take that as you wish. Mix it up good, and I'll be back. So as you can see, it's pretty much all mixed up. Uh, it all looks gray now. Next step is add the concentrated grape juice. So it comes in a bag with a cap on it. A little bit of pain in the ass. You can't use these or your teeth. I know some people cut the box out and do it, but not me. So, you can't see this just helps pop it. Actually, just hold it on there. Take the lid off. Be very careful, because this will stain. Smells really good. And be careful because this will, will stain. Next step, uh, get some really hot water, put it in this bag, put the cap back on, and rinse it up. So I'll be off camera for a second. Back now. So I put some really, really warm tap water in this. You just want to mix it around it in all the corners. To try and get all the Concentrate to lift. I normally do this twice just for safe measure. And the last time I cut the corner off, because you can't get everything out of that. It smells really good. It's pretty aerated, but again, watch for the splashing because this will stay. So don't do this over carpet. I got concrete floor here. And some milk crates, as you see. That's my table. So that's the first time. I'll do one more. These kits literally take less than 20 minutes to start. So you like uh, barely picked up any color because you got everything out. So like I said, I've never had this actually. This tool stick on there so well. It won't give it back to me. Oh well, I'll deal with that later. So, so now that I made sure I got the, the cap all mixed in there, I'm just going to cut a corner off and continue to pour out the corner. 
Back in it goes. Pull this garbage. Be a little sneak peek. You can see that. It smells really, really good. It smells very sweet. Next step. This is one of those 27 liter pails, so about this line here is good for 23 liters. Even though you can make these things less because when you degas, again, watch the splashing because it will sting. Try to do it very gentle. I see it coming up on the side of the fermenter. I know you want to aerate it, but we'll do that after. In she goes. All that good again if you uh, put it to your 22 liter carboy, you can top it up after. So, I'll show you, I had it up to that line, put the lid on. Move the scissors. You know, some people hydrate the yeast, sometimes I do. I don't feel like it this time, never had a problem, not. So, that was just water from the outside. Get a little worried there. Like I said these ones with the O-rings, they really do a good job. So just mix it up, aerate it, mix it all together. So everything's all happy and I'm not even gonna say the word. And B is one. show you. You can see it's happy foamy. Now I'm gonna pitch the yeast. Level on the uh, EC. What's it? 1118, standard wine yeast. I'll clean up my garbage after. Crack it open. I don't know if I can do this with all these hands. Take the lid off, as you can see that. You don't want to drop that anywhere. It's literally going to sprinkle it on and let it hydrate itself. It's amazing these 5 gram packs can do so much. back on. Smell the yeast. Lids back on. Garbage aside. Here's a sheet these things come with. You can write down, I'm not checking the starting gravity. I'll write down the start date. If my pen works. this in its home, wherever I choose that to be. Wine likes to be warmer, so my basement's currently like 16, 17. I could put a heat belt on it, but I'll just wait to see how fast it starts. But I could start it off with a heat belt. How about that? So I'll put a heat belt on this, put an airlock in, and I'll film it back when it's actually bubbling. So that'll be a day or two. Airlock in, heat belt on. Keep your uh, notes, I guess. So the single bubble, guaranteed. Till then. So that's about 24 hours later or less. Uh, this has been uh, fermenting, as you see, because the pails, the lids lift up when they go, and it's bubbling away. So yeast is working on the wine. Uh, what have we got here? This is something that happened yesterday. Hmm. What could it be? Oh wait. Even more surprising. What is that? Wait and find out. 
So I think it's been a few days, so maybe a day, it's Sunday. I think I did this on Friday, and that's that wine bubbling away. This is something happened on Friday. And so is this little pretty baby. What is in that in that oak barrel? You know what that is? That's a beer that was brewed. Let's see what happens. So it's been a while. Airlock's not completely settled out, but it's not making too much noise. Can't even remember when I made this. Oh, look at that day. I know what that is. So I believe it's like June 13th now. This was made May 26th. Um, Merlot wine. I think it's time to transfer it. So, clang, clang. Got a six, and a half, six gallon carboy here. Ready for it to go into. I always have some kind of beer on the go. I'm trying to think even when I made that. I remember. Same day I made this. And got that lifted up. Might want to transfer it, but it's still fermenting slowly. And again, that ain't wine in there. It is a wine barrel, though. So I'm going to get this in there and let you see. So step two, when you always transfer your wine, you got potassium beta bisulfate and potassium sorbate. You use this to kill the yeast to stop it from fermenting. You add one, then the other. I'm just showing you that now because I will be adding them. And I'm going to probably speed this along. So this stage now is the degassing skate. So every once in a while you can just mix it up. I know uh, you can get, uh, I have them, uh, degassers and all that. That speed things up, but it can foam it up and you really have to watch. But me, I let time do it. Because wine aged is better. So hopefully in a week, we'll be having some of this tasty treat. That was that Citra Hop IPA. That stayed on those hops way too long. So here is this wine. Um, could be transferred one more time. Um, it has degassed, as you see the airlock is even. Uh, I just gave it a bit of a shake up a little bit ago and that's why you see this. I'm going to probably transfer this one so I'm not going to make a video of that. It's just going to go into another carboy and sit and age longer. Uh, probably not going to bottle it till the fall. So we're good there. This is actually bottles of this beer here, which is clear. This is my Lime Beer 2017. That Citra Hop IPA is long gone. Well, don't forget to subscribe, enjoy, and keep brewing.